Welcome back our viewers. This is Deepening Your Love in Crisis. My name is Trisha Kim Walsh, licensed marriage and family therapist and emotionally focused therapist. And I'm joined by my esteemed colleague, Claudio Silva, licensed marriage and family therapist and certified emotionally focused therapist. Today, we're excited to talk with you about a very important topic regarding how we as human beings connect with each other through body language, touch, eye contact, and the tone of our voice. We're gonna speak specifically to the research and what the phenomenon in this we discovered. And Claudio is going to tell us a little bit more about a research that was brought to the forefront of our mind recently. Thank you, Tricia. So this research was conducted by psychologist Tiffany Field. She was trying to see the effects of a healthy massage on babies, preterm babies. And she found out many things that happened as the result of massaging these babies. The babies would kind of grow faster. They would be healthier, less depressed, more curious. The immune system was much better. So you can see like these very simple things that we can do like touching our partner, hugging, caressing, being affectionate. Affection Thanks. is something that lowers our stress system. We feel more relaxed, more comfortable, and our immune system will work better, Tricia. Yes, that's lovely, Claudio, and I hope that we can also show this video demonstration of a mother, a French mother, speaking and cooing to her baby in the most loving way of stroking her baby's face gently with her, her hand, and this baby has just woken up from its nap, and she knows how to respond. She's so attuned. She's so gentle. She's just non-verbally letting her baby know, I'm with you. I'm present with you. I care about you. Touching the back of the baby's head, the front of the baby's head. It's almost hypnotic the way the baby is just responding to the love of its mother, knowing that they're safe. Can you imagine this baby rhesus monkey having that kind of touch from its mother the same way that this mother in this video is joining and connecting the power of touch, you just named it, what it can do to our immune system, what it can do to us right now as couples. Most of us as couples will go through difficult times in our relationships, and that even includes physical touch. It includes sex. And I hear that a lot in the room. We've gotten to a point where we're strangers. We're not even holding hands. And mm -hmm. I remind them, it happens. It's going to happen. And what's important is to know that the beginning is a, an introduction, even touching one's hand to be mm -hmm. present and petting one's hand. And I know it seems kind of small, but I've encouraged my couples in the room when there's a tender moment and I can see that the other partner wants to hold their partner's hand, I might even invite them and say, what's happening for you? I'm sensing you want to hold your partner's hand. Am I getting that? And then they say they do and they long to, and then I invite them, would you be willing to turn to your partner and ask your partner, could I hold your hand? I'd like to touch you right now. I'm feeling affectionate to you. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful thing, Claudio, to see uh, two lovers want to hold each other's hands. I don't know if that touches your heart the way it does, but for me, there's nothing more beautiful than the invitation of I'm wanting to feel close to you. Could I, could I hold your hand? And research studies show in the MRI studies of the brain, there's activity, major activity that's happening in the brain where we're wired to connect and to love and to touch in the way that you're naming, that it really speaks to the health of our desire to feel the companionship of knowing that we're in a very difficult world, a, a world that does have a lot of suffering, but if we can feel soft and soothing to each other, our bodies and our brain really react strongly to this and our health improves. And Trisha, I wanna point out that this child had just waken up because we hear someone saying behind the camera, bonjour, bonjour, which means good morning in English. 
So even though this child had just waken up, the child couldn't resist this affectionate caressing and stroking from mama. And we can see the power of touching when someone that we are connected to, that we love, this person caresses us, we really relax. It takes our anxiety away. It has a powerful effect on our nervous system to calm us down, to soothe us. So something, as I was mentioning, we were explaining now, very simple. And it's important to see that sometimes uh, uh, people think about touching just as sex. And although sex is something very, very important for a marriage, but, you know, this touching that you come from behind, you hug your partner, you are talking to your partner, and you are caressing your partner's face, your partner's hand, as you said, uh, you know, or you just hold your partner. So that kind of thing is very, very helpful to connect. And not only that, Trisha, but all the affection, the voice. Some people who didn't have these in their childhood for some reason, because sometimes their own parents also didn't have that from their parents. And when we don't have, it seems awkward at the beginning. But when you learn about this and you start being affectionate, as we are saying about touching, but in your voice as well. Like, for example, when I, when I ask my son to clean something, to put a dish there, to turn the light off, I always speak in a very affectionate voice and I use a loving expression like for example honey would you turn the light off please uh, my love can you clean the table here please you know it's never an order it's always a, an affectionate way of saying and sometimes parents think that they need to have authority and that means power but it just kind of makes their children feel humiliated if you if they talk that way. So the same thing with our partner. We can always be affectionate, loving. And by the way, I talk like this way even to my clients. I'm very affectionate to my clients. I talk to them as if I am their parents. And I yeah. see that I'm modeling that to them. And sometimes they feel a little bit off. So some of them, right, who did not have that, they might feel, oh, this guy seems like a little bit kind of too clingy or but after a while, they see that this is what makes life better. This is what makes us feel good in relationships. When we have like that kind of affection in our families, in our relationships, it really kind of lowers our stress level, it makes us feel really relaxed and makes us feel secure, safe. And it's easier to face problems, to be less scared, to be less fearful. Because when we feel really, really connected to the person we love, it's easier to face the problems of life, Tricia. I couldn't agree with you more. I was just about to emphasize what you're outlining to our viewers is a secure attachment. And what's really good news, and I'll keep saying this as we're going through these series is, you can correct your attachment style. And you know, myself and Claudio, we've talked about our attachment styles, both identifying as more on the anxious attachment style. And we have been able to learn to create a secure attachment in our relationships by practicing. And so that's what we're really asking you as viewers is to continue to practice what we're naming. What, why we're showing you these videos is we're showing you ways in which you can create this in your life, in the softness of your voice, in the touch to your partner and to your child. And we are recognizing that many of us have experienced trauma. And so touch can also activate fear. It can activate memories, harm that's been created. And so I love that you brought up the power of the voice, that we can start off small just by 
being aware the next time you ask your partner to wash the dishes or take out the trash or finish the laundry or ask your child to finish their vegetables. Be reminded of the power of your voice. You do have control over that. It's amazing the difference between saying, could you eat your vegetables versus my love? Could you eat your vegetables? Those, those are so good for your health. Do you see the difference of just how that activates the brain? It can soothe the brain. It can calm those stress hormones to know I'm safe. I didn't get in trouble. I matter. My parent cares about me. My partner cares about me. That's really what we're talking about is in this time of COVID, we want to be cared about. We want to know that in the moments of fear, Claudio, that you're naming, we have the people, the most important people in our life that, that are there for us. There are a lot of things we don't control, but we want to control how we are kind to each other. And that's our hope is in seeing these videos, there's something that's happening inside of you that's softening and recognizing when we are turning toward each other. You see with the baby and their mother, how she was just really soothing and softening and really focused that her world is this baby, that there are things all around her that she could be focused on and she's choosing to turn off the TV, turn off her phone. She is there with her baby. I ask you, we ask you to be present with your partner when they're talking to you about their day. Don't get distracted with electronics. And it's so easy to get lost into Netflix series, right? There's so many good things on TV. The next thing to watch, the next thing to do, but turn your eyes to your lover's eyes. Look into their eyes. Even if they're a Zoom call away and you're not able to be sheltering in place with them, look at them, long for them. Make them feel like you're really present for them and in and, and their pain. They will feel closer to you. You will be soothing their brain to make them feel secure with you. That's why we're spending this time talking about the importance of how a parent response to a child is as important as a partner responding to a partner. That is secure attachment and we can correct this. It starts right now. You can do this right now with your partner. If you're sitting next to them, if they're watching this with you, turn to them and, and share something you're appreciating about them. It's that powerful to soothe, soften and listen. You just brought up something that is very important too, is that attention looking at your partner when your partner is talking to you, stopping what you are doing, making your partner feel important by really turning to your partner. When I say turning to, it's like, like really looking at your partner and showing your partner that you are not bothered because your partner is kind of interrupting you or something, but you, you are welcome in my world. You are always welcome. My you know, you're precious to me. You are the most important thing that I have. So I can stop things to pay attention to you because you're worth of my attention. There's a video I show at my parenting workshops. In this video, there was a girl and a mom, and I don't know if they were in the airport or in a restaurant, but the mom was in the cell phone and the girl was trying to talk to the mom. And, and the girl tries, and then, you know, it's kind of a long time that the girl is trying to get the mom's attention, then the mom never, never stops with the, with the phone. It feels even upset that the girl is trying to get her attention. And the, then the girl, like, try, starts crying and desperate. And the mother kind of even scolds her for taking her attention off, trying to take her attention off the phone. But what we see with that is how we human beings we need we need to feel that someone is paying attention to us and that we are more important than everything else so you see that those are very very small things simple things but they are ways how we connect to the important people in our lives this is a message you know we we are doing something with our body, with our eyes, but the message is, you are important to me. I am here for you. There is nothing in this world that is worth more of my attention than you. I love that. That's beautiful. And that is really deepening your love in these times of crisis. It's in the way we look at each other. 
It's in the way that we use our voice. It's in the quality of our time that we give to each other. It's understanding that we may have attachment styles that bring us back to really painful memories where we didn't have the kind of support that we longed for from our parents. But the good news is that we can change that in the connection we have to our children and to our partners. And we're excited to be on this journey with you on helping you to do that. So again, I invite you to take out a writing utensil and a pad of paper and take in what are you going to do this week? And I invite you to identify one area that you're going to improve. I know for myself, after talking about this with you, Claudio, I'm gonna be mindful with my husband that this week I'm gonna be mindful of my voice because sometimes I can increase my voice because I really wanna get his attention and that can sound critical and that can shut him down. And I know with his attachment style, he can sometimes be avoidant and shut off. So I know that if I can change my quality of voice and really be present, that's going to improve the quality of our relationship. So I invite you viewers to think of one area that you could start practice, practicing right now, write it down, identify what you're gonna do differently, and then ask your partner as an invitation to see if they see any changes. Like, did you notice this week that I was really working on this? because I wanted to be closer to you. Like share that with your partner. Let your partner know that they're on your mind, that you want to be softer with them. It's really powerful when you let your partner know that you're working on being a better partner. That's a gift. That's a treasured experience to let your partner know that they matter so much to you. So think about the Reese's baby monkey looking for that cloth mother. We're looking for our partners. We want to see our partner succeed and get closer to us. And the good news is we know how to do it. Thank you again for joining us, deepening your love in crisis. We value your time. We value you being here with us. And we hope that you took great value in the information that was received. Again, this is Trisha Kim Walsh and my wonderful esteemed colleague, Claudio. Thank you.